everybody, this is VG Logic, and on this episode of Played This, we're going to be having a look at Trash It on the PlayStation. This game was developed by Rage Software, who were responsible for a few football games that I don't know much about, but they were also responsible for some quite obscure stuff like Revolution X, which is a rail shooter. And it came out on both the PlayStation and Sega Saturn in 1997. As far as what you actually do is concerned, it's a bit more unusual than most of the games we've looked at. You play as, well, the fat builder guy of course, and your goal is to collect little hammers that you free from bits of the scenery. If you collect enough, you can exchange them for bigger and better hammers, in a flying hammer shop of course, and this is important because without these you will eventually reach a wall where you just aren't powerful enough to proceed, and in this game that's a literal wall. The levels are piled high with destructible junk, it's usually a myriad of bricks and stones, and you have to use your hammer to smash through it. Whenever you find objects out of the norm, like a bathtub or a fridge, when you break it, it will normally let out a couple of these little hammers that then run around the level. You pick these little hammers up with a vacuum cleaner that our friend here stores in his mouth, because why not? However, doing it this way only gives you one point per hammer. The proper way to do it is to whack them with your own hammer to stun them, and that's not easy considering how fast these guys are, and then you suck them up. And this will give you double the points, however, if you don't do it fast enough, the hammers get back up. If you smack them a second time, they die. I'm not kidding, they sprout wings in a halo and then they clear off, so you have to make sure you're ready when you decide to deal with them. They're called Timmies, by the way. As the player, you have to make sure you plan your route around the stages carefully, because if you don't, you can end up creating a death trap for yourself. Breaking the scenery brings up its own challenges, but if things all go to hell, you can hide in your hat to negate damage, which is a nice touch if you're fast enough to do it. Although you can't alter the length of the hammer, you can be surprisingly accurate with it. The end of the hammer does hit a very exact point considering its size, allowing for precision, which can be valuable in some situations and can prevent you from getting crushed. Death really isn't a permanent thing anyway, if you die you just teleport back to the start of the stage, and if you lost your hammer when you died, you can just whistle to get it back. So a quick summary, I mean you free the Timmies, you smack the Timmies, you suck the Timmies up and you buy better hammers, that really is the flowchart for this game. It's stupid, but that's what we do. As I said, death isn't a permanent thing, so any real threat doesn't come from that. Instead, you need to take time to navigate these levels. You need time to see what scenery you can or can't get through with your hammer. You need time to stun the Timmies, and you need time to do that in a way that will maximise how many Timmy points you collect from each stage. You want to know what you don't have? Well, obviously it's time, isn't it? You don't have very long to get stuff done. Even early on, the countdown rears its ugly head as the most dangerous adversary in the game. This really is the only way you can lose. I should mention too that levels don't just have an end point, there's a bell you need to find, and regardless if you've got all the Timmies or not, unless you hit this bell to say that you're done, you aren't going anywhere. After you've done this, the game counts up your points. Your guy does a cheeky wee in the background because of course he does, and you're done. If you run out of time, you get some spooky music, the guy's face from Despicable Me briefly shows up and you lose a life, so sometimes it's better to get less Timmies but learn what the level is like and escape with all your lives intact. Fortunately, if you do screw up a level, you can revisit it later to collect more Timmies from them. Bear in mind though, this costs a fee. However many Timmies you've got from that stage last time, you need to give back for re-entry. So if you've cleared a tough stage and only missed a few points, it might not be worth going back. As you progress through the game, you're introduced to new obstacles and items to help you traverse the stages. What starts as something quite simple quickly becomes a mix of physics-based puzzles and a furious battle to get quite a lot done when you haven't got much time. You even get bombs a few stages in too, which really help to clear up some of the more cluttered areas. If you are curious as well, the Timmies do get bigger, and they're worth far more points later on. There's also UFOs. Yeah. I'm happy that they chose to give the environments some variants too. You start in the junkyard, but later on you'll end up in a chemical plant, a rocket launch pad, and even miniature in a kid's playroom. 
I really like just how odd Trash it is. I like the character you play as, and to me, this really does stand out as one of the more unique games I've played on the PlayStation, so far at least. As far as difficulty is concerned, I think it's a bit more subjective. I, for one, am absolutely terrible at puzzle games, and Trash It really does become a puzzler with rules of its own later on. Now, I found that the game got quite difficult suddenly, about 15 stages in, but your mileage may vary. As much as I've tried, I have never finished Trash It. Now, I usually don't make videos like this if I've not finished the game, but seeing how little there was online about this one, I really wanted to, even if my knowledge isn't as complete as I'd like. As for how it looks and sounds, it's all par for the course really, I mean it's hardly got groundbreaking graphics, but they are fine, you can tell what is supposed to be shown there. And the music is okay as well, uh, the load times are a little on the long side, but they've at least put a small sort of whack-a-mole minigame in there to keep you entertained whilst the loading screens are going. Um, honestly, it serves a purpose, so I'm happy it's there. For all the positive things I can say about the game, it really pains me to say that Trash It has more than a few real shortcomings and problems. Now don't get me wrong, I like Trash It for what it is on the surface, I like some of its ideas and I like how unique it is, but there are some problems there that do persist from the moment you start the game. First off is really the big one, the one that I never really got used to. Why does my giant construction worker slip and slide when he's walking? It really doesn't matter what's underneath your feet, it may as well all be ice, and there's just no need for it. Now in a game where you're expected to do some pretty precise stuff later, this really is the last thing you need, and I often find myself feathering left and right to get myself in a position to do very simple things. It's not like you can even be clever with it. I mean, I'd understand if you could do things like run and then crouch to slide under obstacles, but here you can't because you need to completely stop before you crouch. After you've run out of time a couple of times, screwing up what really should be easy jumps, it's hard to shake the feeling that this slipping and sliding only exists to hinder your progress. The controls on top of the movements are also a bit poorly thought out in my opinion. There's just odd commands like holding up to whistle for your hammer after you die, a command that I hasten to point out isn't even shown in the controls in the options menu. It's unnecessary, as there's never a reason not to have your hammer, and whistling for it takes no time at all, so why let me lose it in the first place? Even getting the vacuum cleaner out has an odd command, you have to hold up on the d-pad and then press square, which is usually the button for the hammer. It's similar when you want to pick things up too, that's hold down and press X, and whereas that's a bit more intuitive, it all feels like it should be simpler. The PlayStation has plenty of buttons to pick from, there's no need for button combinations and holding things down. And you may think this is a weird one to comment on, but I really need to show you this. The tutorials are awful. Now I'm not expecting the developers to cater to me not having the manual to hand 20 years after the game came out, but these really aren't great. There's never any text explaining anything, you just watch as someone fumbles around the control showing you things. The buttons at the top flash when they're being used, and you just try to take from it what you can. They didn't even bother to cut out where the guy messes up the inputs, although I empathise with him, and like I said the controls are already a little bit awkward. One of the tutorials later shows you how to assemble a rocket. It's great that it shows you that and that you can drive a forklift truck, which is awesome in its own right, but because nothing is written and nothing is explained, you'll be watching it a few times over or you simply just won't understand what you're supposed to do. Now, I'm not going to drone on about the tutorials anymore, but you do get the idea. Trash It is one of those obscure PS1 games nobody ever talks about. I don't think its problems are bad enough that it should stay in obscurity, but they are there to a point where they are quite distracting from some of the cooler ideas Trash It brings to the table. So to finish this video off, would I recommend you play this one? Well, yes. I mean, in spite of its shortcomings, Trash It hasn't aged too badly, and if puzzle platformers are your thing, you'll probably find a lot to enjoy here. Well, I think that really does wrap it up for this episode of Played This. I hope you enjoyed the video and like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you next time. Oh, one of the passwords for this game is pleb. It actually is. P-L-E-B. Pleb. See?